Hi, I'm Steve. Thank you for visiting our channel, Patio Heat, where we provide visual concepts of infrared heating as well as tips for ideal patio comfort. Check out our patioheat.com website for sales and more information. We appreciate you tapping that like button as it helps others find our channel. Now let's get heating. All right, so here is a viewer submitted a drawing or design. And what you have here is just basically a structure. Um, there's a small seating area here, and let's just go ahead and get right into the dimensions. Overall dimensions we have is 10 feet wide by about 13 feet wide. And then we have a height of the bottom of this beam here at uh, eight foot six. And so there are some uh, joists or, uh, yeah, joists up here. And um, rather rafters, I'm sorry. And the customer had already placed the heaters on the left and the right. What I'm gonna do here is just go ahead and show some uh, hints and some ideas what you could do to make this uh, work out a little bit better and safer. So first of all, let's go ahead and look at the uh, clearances below. So clearances below, what I've done here is I've moved the heater so that there are 18 inches of clearance from this edge here to the inside edge of the heater itself here. So that's number one. And the reason I did that is because you're not going to be utilizing the space if this is a barbecue section and a doorway where there's an entry exit point. And so we really want to concentrate the, um, the majority of heat right here in the seating position here. All right. And so the next thing is that um, we want to look at is the fact that the clearances to combustibles. So we did meet the clearances to combustibles on the left side here, closest to this um, post. But did we meet the clearances above the heater? And I have those, um, uh, the heaters, like I said, mounted right here on this beam. But we do have these rafters. Now, I don't know where these rafters actually sit in relationship to the, sorry about that, in relationship to the uh, height of this um, cross member here. But um, if they are anywhere close to where I have mine, they will not work. So here's your clearance above the heater itself. And with that, you can see that we need six inches of clearance from the top edge of the heater to any combustible above. So mounting it on this outside beam might be an issue if in fact these beam, or these uh, uh, rafters here are sitting below the six inch beam that I have here. Okay, so if they're higher, then we're, we should be okay and there should be no issue. And in reference to this angle, so the manufacturer states that if you have the heater at a 60 degree angle off of straight out, which I have these at, then they could be mounted on a combustible surface, being a wall, or in this case, we have just a beam like that. But above the heater, we still need that six inches of clearance. So what I would do in this case is I would take, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this clearance off for a moment. I would take the, um, brackets and I would physically mount them on the rafter itself. So put one bracket here, one bracket here. The nice thing about this slim line, and by the way, these are 3000 watt uh, slim line units, 240 volts. And here you can see there's a little channel built into the top edge of the slim line unit where the bracket can slide back and forth left and right on either the left and right side bracket. And what that allows you to do is move the bracket a certain distance to meet up with whatever the attachment point is that you have, given that there is a limitation on how far in you can go depending on what model you buy. So that would be true. And then you can just mount the bracket above on the uh, uh, rafter here and then point the heater straight down and move it 30 degrees or even move it maybe 20 degrees so that you still have the clearances above. Now the heater will be below the line of the this beam right here, but it, it still is the case right now. And um, if you moved it up a higher, then you could possibly change the angle down to zero. However, you still meet, need to meet the clearances that we had stated above the units like that. So you might need to drop the uh, bracket, get the extended bracket two inch extension or something of that nature if you had the heater pointed straight to the ground. But let's go ahead and look at the um, overall ray footprint of heat. So footprint of heat, you see that we have this pretty much the full 10 foot um, section heated. We're missing maybe a foot on either side. So maybe really we should say eight foot, foot here. Um, 
but with the two crossover members or two crossover beams on a 3000 watt unit that should be sufficient for this application here um, you definitely would not want to go with a 4000 watt so that would be 8000 total and if you did go with an 8000 total then you would definitely want some sort of dimming system on this um, application so um, also you could just use simple on off switches and just have one unit on one unit off and one thing I did want to show you let's see if I can bring this to the front real quick so if I hid this one unit here and just say we didn't we only used one unit then you can see that our overall coverage is pretty much going to be this is going to be a comfortable spot but this is the maximum throw that the heater really is going to put out so if you're sitting in this chair you're really not going to feel it not to mention the fact that the ray is going to hit the table and not really hit your lower body in any way so um, that's another point that I'd like to make out. Uh, these are infrared heaters. They're light waves. As the light travels through space, it'll um, hit any object and then absorb into that object. And that's how light waves work in general. So, all right, so let me go ahead and turn this back on here. So this is the two units here. I'm gonna turn this dimension off here. So that's pretty much about it. Um, if you're looking for some assistance with your outdoor heating application and you would like us to review your plans or come up with some suggestions, please send your request to designs at patioheat.com. I'm Steve. Thank you very much for watching. And don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps us out. Thank you and have a great day.